Hello, I'm Ms. Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. The Winter Olympics just began this week. Athletes from all over the world come together to compete in all kinds of winter sports, like skiing, snowboarding, and the very popular ice skating or figure skating, as it's called. Figure skaters gracefully glide across the ice and make difficult leaps and jumps. It takes a lot of practice, skill, and a little bit of science. Today, I'm going to share a story written by Christy Yamaguchi, who won the Olympic gold medal in figure skating back in 1992. Then you can explore some of the science behind ice skating by ice skating right inside your house. No ice needed. Now in this book called, It's a Big World, Little Pig, Poppy the Pig is a figure skater. She is traveling to the World Games competition in France, but she's a little nervous. She wonders if she will make any new friends and how will this new adventure turn out? Well, let's find out. It's a Big World, Little Pig, written by Christy Yamaguchi and illustrated by Tim Bowers, published by Sourcebooks Jabberwocky. Poppy was a pig who dreamed big. She dreamed of being an ice skating star. And then she made it happen. She was the star of the rink. One day, Poppy received a beautiful invitation in the mail. Reach for the stars, little pig, it read. Fly to Paris, France and compete in the World Games. Paris was far away from Poppy's home in New York City. Poppy was excited to see new places, but she was scared about being so far from home. You go, girl, said Poppy's grandparents. Dream big, pig, exclaimed Poppy's best friend, Emma. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother and father. And remember, we'll be with you every step of the way. Here's a little something for good luck, said Emma. She handed Poppy a good luck charm. It's a big world, little pig, but remember that everyone smiles in the same language. Poppy smiled, then it was time to go. When Poppy arrived at the World Athlete Village, she saw so many different athletes from all over the world. Would they speak the same language? Would she make any new friends? The village was so big. How would she find her way around? Poppy felt very nervous. Poppy had to find the check-in booth, but she didn't know where to go. She was so nervous, she accidentally bumped into a snowboarder from China named Lee. Do you know where the check-in booth is? Poppy asked. Lee said, I have a map. Let's find it together. They talked and talked as they walked around the athlete village. They even taught each other a few words in their own languages. Hello and ni hao, they said to each other. As they waited in line at the check-in booth, Poppy showed Lee her good luck charm. Cool, said Lee. I have a lucky charm too. And he showed Poppy his jade goldfish. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Emma was right. They both smiled in the same language. Poppy started to feel a little bit better about her adventure in Paris. Poppy and Lee wished each other good luck in the competition and waved goodbye. Poppy was soon very hungry and decided to eat in the athlete's dining hall. She looked around the crowded room for a friendly face. 
A skier from Italy named Gianna waved and offered Poppy a spot at her table. Do you like Italian food? We can share, Gianna said. It's my favorite, said Poppy. From pasta to gelato, and of course, mmm, pizza. Poppy and Gianna talked and talked about food and music and discovered how much they both loved Puccini, an Italian composer. Poppy smiled at her new friend. Buona fortuna, they said, wishing each other good luck. It was time for Poppy to go practice. She was dressed in her competition costume and was a little worried it might be too different. Another ice skater was standing near Poppy. She was from Japan and her name was Kiyomi. Kiyomi was dressed in her competition costume too. It was like nothing Poppy had ever seen. Poppy admired Kiyomi's bold and brightly colored dress. Kiyomi looked at Poppy's spectacular, sparkly dress. I like your costume, they said at the same time. Poppy and Kiyomi discovered they both loved fashion and designed their own costumes. Poppy smiled at her new friend, and her new friend smiled back. Ganbate kudasai, they said, wishing each other good luck. Luck. It was time for the competition to start. Poppy waited backstage and thought about how wonderful it was to have met so many new friends. Just then, she saw a speed skater from Australia named Zoe. She looked very scared and nervous. Poppy knew just how she felt. When I'm nervous, Poppy told Zoe, I think about what my grandparents and my best friend always tell me. They cheer, dream big, and you go, girl. Thanks, said Zoe. My friends and family always tell me, you can do it. Poppy and Zoe talked and talked about how much their family and friends support them and love them no matter what. Poppy smiled at her new friend, and her new friend smiled back. Zoe wasn't nervous anymore because she made a new friend in Poppy. They wished each other good luck and said, Hooroo, which means goodbye. Poppy took to the ice. She felt the joy of new friendships and discoveries. She skated from her heart. She knew she would always remember this special trip. When Poppy skated off the ice, her mother and father gave her a huge hug. They were so proud of her. I'm so happy you traveled so far, her father said. I'm so happy you followed your dreams, her mother said. In celebration, Poppy and her family spent the rest of the week in Paris, the city of light. They saw the Eiffel Tower and visited some art museums. They even ate some French food. Poppy bought four postcards. She addressed them to Lee, the snowboarder, Gianna, the skier, Kiyomi, the ice skater, and Zoe, the speed skater. I'm so glad we became friends, she wrote. Even though we're from different parts of the world, we all smile in the same language. And then she signed each postcard, Love Poppy. The End Poppy the Pig had quite the adventure. She made new friends from all over the world. Author Christy Yamaguchi also went to France when she competed in the 1992 Winter Olympics. She won the gold medal. I'll include a link in the description box below if you'd like to watch her award-winning performance. Now you might wonder why it's called figure skating. 
Well, that's because a long time ago, people used to make figures or designs in the ice with their ice skates. An ice skate is a boot with a sharp metal blade that cuts into the ice, yet it allows the ice skater to glide, twirl, and even dance across the ice. Pretty amazing. While the ice provides the slippery surface needed to skate on, you also need a bit of balance and a force called friction. Now, friction occurs when two surfaces slide against each other. Smooth surfaces like ice and glass are easy to slide over because they create very little friction. Rough surfaces like rocks and sand create much more friction, and it's harder to move things when there's a lot of friction holding them back. Smooth ice helps to reduce the amount of friction, and that's what ice skaters need. Let's explore friction by making our own indoor skating rink. To skate indoors, you don't need any ice, but you will need an adult or a parent to help supervise. You'll need an open safe space and two paper plates or wax paper. I'll also provide some other suggestions to try later on. Optional, you might want some crayons, tape, or music to skate by. First, you'll want an adult to help you choose an open area of your house that is free of any objects or furniture that can make you trip, fall, or break something. Perhaps the middle of your living room? or maybe even an empty playroom. Then you're going to wanna to get your two paper plate skates ready. Now you might choose to decorate your skates like I did here, or you might leave it blank. Um, so use whatever plate that you might have. And what you're going to do is put one foot on each paper plate and then try to move forward. Try to move your legs around like an ice skater does. Can you skate in a straight line? Can you make a turn? Which is easier? And if you're having trouble keeping the plate under your feet, give it a little bit of a chance to get used to it. But if you're still having trouble, you can always use some duct tape to secure the plate to your feet. Uh, now, once you've done that, you can ask yourself, was it easy? What did you have to do to try to move forwards? How did you have to move your legs? Could you feel the plate sliding on the floor? Did you have to put your arms out to help you find balance? Now that you're an expert skater, why don't we try some skating challenges? You can try creating a skating routine to some classical skating music. You can even try to do a freeze dance. That is, play some music and stop skating when the music stops. Use your balance to stay upright. You can also try doing a relay race on your paper skates. What other ideas can you come up with? What other items can you make into skates? You could try making skates out of just about anything, like empty tissue boxes, cereal boxes cut in half, styrofoam plates, two pieces of wax paper, pieces of a cardboard box or plastic Krispies, or even padded plastic delivery envelopes that you might get in the mail. Try out different items to test their ability to glide. What works the best? And why do you think that is? Try it and find out. Don't have a lot of indoor space? Well, you can still explore friction by using a plastic cutting board or other slippery surface and a variety of small objects like a rubber eraser, ice cube, small plastic toys, or even paper clips. Now go ahead and place a few different objects on the board. Then prop up the board or lift it up very slowly at an angle, a slight angle. 
Now, which one moves the fastest? Why do you think that is? Does the size of the object make a difference? Or what about the material or what the object is made out of? Does that make any difference? Try it and find out. If you enjoyed the story today, be sure to check out Christy Yamaguchi's other book, Dream Big Little Pig, available at the library. While you can also catch the Winter Olympic figure skaters on TV, you might even see some ice skaters down at the newly opened skating rink in downtown Wilkesbury. I hope you had fun. I hope you keep exploring, and I'll see you next time. Bye!